Hello, my name is Ed, and today I'm going to be showing you how to download and set up the Scratch 3.0 development environment. So this is for creating Scratch, uh, Scratch 3.0 extensions and also just messing around with the code and like editing stuff. So let's get started. Um, actually, no, before we get started, I'm, this tutorial is assuming a few things. Um, it's assuming that you're running Windows 10. Um, and then it's assuming you already have Git and Node, but we're going to be downloading these anyways, so if, uh, this is completely noob-friendly. So if you don't know how to download those, I'm going to be showing you how to step-by-step uh, -step how to do that. Um, and then it's also assuming that you're an administrator on your computer and that your, uh, your network, like your Wi-Fi and stuff, doesn't have weird firewall stuff built into it because we're going to be hosting a few things. All right, let's get started. So first, we're going to go ahead and download git. So we can type git download into your favorite search engine. So you should probably get this page. And then go ahead and click Windows, and that will download an installer. Next, we can get Node.js. So we can type Node.js download, click the first page, and then click Windows installer. So you'll have these two installer files. So let's go ahead and download Node first. So we're going to double click this. We're going to click Next. I accept the terms of the license agreement. Next, keep everything default. Next, install. So then we're going to get this. This is called user account control. If you're an administrator, you can go ahead and click yes, and then if you don't get that, that means you're not an administrator and you won't be able to do this tutorial. So we're just going to wait for this to install. And then we can go ahead and click finish, and that's it. Next, we're going to go ahead and run the git installer. We're going to hit yes. Next, next. Oop, so I already have this installed, so I'm going to go ahead and click yes. Um, next, 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 next. Uh, just keep everything default. Uh, and then finally, install. So we'll just wait a minute. This should install. So we're going to uncheck this because that's going to open a window and then click finish. So you now have git and node.js installed. So we can go ahead and get rid of these. So next we want to make a folder for all the stuff that we're going to be downloading. So we're going to download um, the scratch environment. So make sure this folder is in like a normal place like your downloads or documents or desktop. Um, if you put this into program files or something else like some sort of system folder, you it might glitch stuff out. Um, so I'm just going to put it in my downloads folder. So I'm going to go ahead and right click, new folder, and I'm going to call this scratch stuff. And then we can double click it and go into it. So next we're going to go ahead and click the start button. We're going to type node.js command prompt. I'm going to click here. And now we have the command prompt. So we're going to go ahead and click here, copy this, and then we're going to go back to our terminal. We're going to type cd, space, and then right click. So right clicking in terminals pastes whatever you have on your clipboard. This up here is where the, um, the this folder that we just made is. So mine is in um, my hard drive. Um, this is the user. It's in my downloads folder. It's then in another folder called stuff, and then scratch stuff. So typing cd this and then hitting enter will make it so this window is now inside this folder. So next, you're going to want to go ahead and go to the paste bin in the description. That's a website that will um, allow you to see this document that I have right here. So this is going to have a few commands. So I'm going to go ahead and select this, right click, copy, and then I'm just going to right click it into the console and then I'm going to hit enter. So now it's going to clone Scratch GUI from GitHub. So GitHub is a website that allows people to host all the code when they're and like files for when they're working on um, computer programming projects and stuff. It's very ni very nice, very useful. 
So the thing we downloaded, Git, will, automatic, will allow us to automatically download things from there. So that's what it's doing right now. So in your Scratch Stuff folder, or whatever you named it, you can see that it went ahead and created a folder called Scratch-GUI. So the folders inside here you do not want to rename because that will complicate stuff. So right now, so there's not much in here. You might see nothing. So until this finishes, you're not going to see anything in it. Maybe this, but so now we'll just wait a minute. You can go ahead and fast forward. I just find tutorials that fast forward through things and don't address errors and stuff are confusing sometimes. So I'm just going to let this sit. This also get, gives people an estimate of how long this, these things should take. So this is basically just downloading this folder off of a website. There we go. So when you're back to C or whatever letter, colon, and then some stuff. That means that is done. So if we go into our folder, there's going to be a bunch of new files here. Wonderful. So I'm going to go ahead and back, go back, and we're going to go back right here. So next we want to copy and paste the next command. So git clone. Ooh, did that not work? Let's go ahead, copy, paste. There we are. Paste by right-clicking. Um, git clone, and then this is the scratch VM one. So I'm going to go ahead and click enter. And you should see it made another folder. So what it's doing now is grabbing another folder off of the internet. So one of these is the Scratch engine that runs all of the logic and all of the code. And the other one, the GUI, is the menus and stuff for Scratch. So here we go. Looks like it's finished because it's not doing any more stuff, and then it just has this. So next we want to change directory directories. So we want to go and make this go into one of the folders. So we need to go into the VM. So go into here, scratch-vm. We want to copy this, type cd space, and then paste this in, hit enter. So now this window is inside of this folder. So now we can mess with it. So we can type npm space install. Then we're going to go ahead and hit enter. Sorry, hit enter. And now what it's going to go ahead and do is set up some files for us. Alright, so that's done. So now we're going to go ahead and type npm space link, L-I-N-K, hit enter. Now this is a command that's going to link the two folders together. So this is one of the commands that's going to do that. Great, once you see this, then you're going to be all set. So now we're going to go into the other folder, the GUI folder. So we're going to go ahead and hit back. We're going to go into scratch-gui. We're going to go ahead and copy this, which is pointing where that folder is. We're going to type cd space, right-click to paste, and then hit enter. So now you should see that this window is inside of the scratch-gui folder. Oop, I just selected a whole bunch of stuff. Um, there we go. So now what we can go ahead and do is type npm space install hit enter. So this is going to set up some of the files here. I'm 
also going to go ahead and get rid of this. I just realized that was wrong. Cool. Cool. So that finished. Everything looks fine. Um, don't listen to whatever this says. So next we're going to type npm space link space scratch dash vm. Hit enter. And now what that should have done is linked these two folders together. So we can go ahead and type npm start. Hit enter. And so now what this should start doing is host a little server. So your computer is now a server, as long as this window is open and running. Um, and we can go ahead and see what that is. So you can go to this URL which is not a website, it's a you connecting to yourself. So nobody else can connect to this, so we're going to go ahead and copy that. We're going to go into our browser, we're going to paste that, and we're going to hit enter. So hopefully, if we did this correctly, we should be brought to a scratch window. Great, here we are. So now we're in scratch. 3.0, we're running everything out of the two folders that we just downloaded. So we can go here, we can see the extensions. We didn't add any of our custom ones, so nothing appears there. And this should work perfectly. Um, a few things, um, you can't have, so this is an offline version, so that means you can't log in, you can't see any of your projects, um, you can't publish these to the website, and you don't have access to the backpack but you can download them to your computer and save the files uh, not on the internet. So everything should be working here. So if you ever want to come back to this, oh no, I closed the window. How do I go back to the, um, the Scratch window? So what we're going to go ahead and do is go back to our Scratch-GUI folder. We're going to go ahead and open Node.js command prompt. We're going to copy the where the folder is, type cd space, right click, hit enter, now we're here, and then you'll go ahead and type npm space start, hit enter. Once this finishes loading, there we are. You can go ahead and go back to this website. Localhost means it's being hosted on your computer, and then this is the port number which will always be the same. Oop, this is frozen. Here, let me go ahead and close that window. I'm going to open it again. Okay, great. So now what? So there are a few tutorials online. I'm still not entirely sure how to use this, but I do know of a few things that it might help you. So here's my Scratch stuff folder. Um, so VM means virtual machine. That's where all of the code and stuff is ran. GUI means graphical user interface. That means this whole menu system here and dragging blocks. That's where that comes from. So I believe in one of these folders, you can put extensions. Is this it? This might be it. Um, Scratch VM SRC extensions, and then you can make a folder. I'm not exactly sure, because there's a few extensions folders like scattered throughout. Um, and then you might also have to e edit another file. I'm not too sure, so I'd go ahead and look at their official documentation. So I do know there is this folder as well that keeps some of the graphics for extensions. And then there's index.jsx. So if you want to go ahead and add your extension to this extensions menu, you're going to go ahead and have to edit this. So, and then, oh yeah, and every time you make an edit to the either of these folder, any of the files in these folders, this page will refresh. So just make sure that you're not making a project you actually want to save in here. So make sure to save that before you edit anything in here. So I believe I can go ahead and append this with an extension. So I'll make up an extension real quick. Oh, one second, I didn't copy everything. Dude. So I'm going to go ahead here. I'll make this big for you guys. So I can go ahead and add one of these things to the list. Name. So 
beans extension ID. Just make sure the ID, anything that says ID is unique and is not repeated anywhere else in the list. Beans collaborator. I think extension IDs have to be lowercase too. Um, beans direct message eat beans lol description eat beans lol I don't know what the difference between these is so ID GUI extension we're going to go ahead and change this to beans um, feed your true disables false this doesn't need bluetooth internet connection required no because it's beans um, um, bloop, bloop, bloop. cool so I think this is just the same thing I'm not too sure. Beans, ID, and then we need to change this because this is this says ID. So if that repeats any anything else, then this will not work. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control S. So now you can see that this compiled again and it should have refreshed this page. Oh, so now this page is automatically gonna refresh. So now if we go to the extensions. Our beans extension is here. Here I forgot to change the icon here, but beans, eat beans lol, collaboration with beans. So now we can click here. That won't do anything because there's no actual folder associated with that. And I'm still not exactly sure where to put that folder, but uh, if I ever figure that out, I'll go ahead and make another tutorial for you guys. Or you guys can go and look on the wiki. There's a few threads and stuff. Um, yeah, so that's how to set up your development environment. Um, It's a little convoluted because the way you used to do extensions before was through the, the website itself and you wouldn't have to do anything offline. Um, one thing that may help, so if you just want to run somebody else's extension and not actually have to deal with any of this crap, you can go ahead and go to this URL, which is made by a guy named Sheepst Sheeptester. So Sheeptester made a custom version of Scratch. You don't need to do any of this. You just go to this website and it works. Um, and what they went ahead and did was added a choose an extension button where you can paste an extension URL here. So um, I haven't been able to find any extension URLs that work here, but um, if you were to develop your extension, maybe have the J um, maybe put a direct link to the JS file here. I'm not too sure. Um, then there's uh, they automatically they already put their extension in here by default, so. There's some little things here. And then all the same stuff applies where you can't save in here. You have to save everything online. You have to save everything to your computer. Um, ooh, there's also no cloud variables because it doesn't use the internet. So there's that as well. So I hope this, was tu um, this tutorial was helpful. Um, if it wasn't, please uh, spam me in the comments below at how terrible I am. Um, oh, if you ever want to stop this, by the way, you can just go ahead and close the window. Um, yeah, so if I'm wrong, just go ahead and yell at me in the comments if your stuff isn't working properly, or if you just hate me. Um, if you found this helpful, please share this with people. Um, it looks like on the wiki a lot of people were very confused on how to set all this up, so I went ahead and figured it out, and now I made this tutorial for you guys, so that's it.